is up you guys welcome back to another one if you are new to the channel i am gold pony i do new car truck suv reviews on youtube and today i finally got my 4k camera back it has been fixed so that is cool but anyways we are in the new 2022 subaru impreza courtesy of apple subaru in york pa for more information on their inventory please feel free to check out the link in the description box below and so i'm in this one today because there are actually a couple of changes for the 2022 impreza not only that this is a compact car that comes standard with all-wheel drive which you guys probably already know but it's not just that it also is the best all-wheel drive system in existence which is a very cool thing as well and so in this video i will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking steering for ride quality sound system exhaust clip all that fun stuff so having said all of that what do you guys say let's just go ahead and jump right into it and as always let's start with pricing and so as you can imagine there are several different trim levels for the 2022 impreza first one being the base sedan starting at eighteen thousand seven hundred ninety five dollars then there's the premium sedan starting at twenty two thousand one hundred ninety five dollars sports sedan for twenty three five ninety five there is no limited sedan by the way for the 2022 model year so we did want to mention that right there but then the limited hatchback will start at twenty six thousand three hundred ninety five dollars by the way for those first three trim levels i did mention sedan they are all available in hatchback form. If you wanted to go that route, simply just add $500 to any of those prices. But regardless of trim level that you go with, the power plant on the Impreza is going to be the same. Powering this little beast is going to be a two liter horizontally opposed Subaru Boxer engine, putting out 152 horsepower at 6,000 RPM, 145 pound-feet of torque, coming in at 4,000 RPM, power sent to all wheels. through Subaru's legendary symmetrical all-wheel drive system. That power sent to the ground through either a five Five speed manual which comes on the base trims or the sport hatchback or a linear tronic cvt which of course is what we have today and by the way that linear tronic cvt does come with paddle shifters i'll have you know which we will be testing out in a little bit here but zero to 60 time is going to come in at approximately 8.5 seconds with mpg numbers coming in at 24 in the city 31 on the highway from the manual 28 in the city 36 on the highway for the CVT, so substantially more if you were to go with that CVT, of course, but either way, taking regular unleaded fuel. But so now having got all of that out of the way, what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and find a straightaway. Let's test out the paddle shifters here first. And before we do that, I did want to mention there is actually a full manual shift mode to this CVT. So it's kind of simulated shifting, but just slide the shifter all the way to the back and to the left. And that is going to give me full control. And that actually tells me what simulated gear I am in up here. Here on the digital portion of the gauges as well so it's saying i'm in fifth and there's an aston martin vantage that's pretty cool but i can downshift it's going to put me in fourth that's pretty cool i like how they do that even though it is simulated shifting but anyways let's go ahead and find that straight away and let's see how quickly these paddle shifters are going to react for us here all right we are in first gear you guys let's go ahead and test out the paddle shifters here in sport driving mode here we go ha huh. they're not bad okay Keep in mind, again, it's simulated shifting, but they actually do react pretty quickly, which I kind of like. So if you want to have a little bit of fun with the paddle shifters, seeing as this is a CVT, they're there for you. And they actually do react quick, although wouldn't have minded a little higher quality finish. They are black plastic, but other than that, I shouldn't be picky at this price point. But having now gotten that out of the way, what do you guys say? Let's find one more straightaway here. Let's get back full control to the Impreza. Let's do an acceleration test. And like I mentioned before I did that there, there is SI drive here for the Impreza that's gonna be found on the right side of the steering wheel. You have the choice between sport and intelligence. So if you put it in the sport driving mode, it's just gonna adjust the shift points, the throttle sensitivity, things like that. So having said that, let me go ahead and leave it in that sport driving mode. And let's now test out the acceleration and see how quickly this one can get us here up to speed all right in three two here we go i skipped one <laughs> all right a little bit downhill here not the quickest thing in the world i gotta be honest zero to 16 8.5 seconds is not the quickest thing in the world so you shouldn't have any issues in merging onto the highway, but wouldn't have minded if they made this one a bit quicker. I'm thinking probably in the future, they may turbocharge the Impreza, nothing like they have on the WRX or anything like that, but I can imagine them doing that not only for gas mileage, but also give this thing a little bit more pep because this is not the quickest thing in the world. But anyways, to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. And so up front, you will find 11.6 inch ventilated front discs. In the back, 10.8 inch solid rear discs 
far as that 60 to zero stopping distance goes, that is going to come in at a very respectable, very impressive 118 feet. And so since we're coming up to a stop sign, let me just, yeah, that feels really good actually. Definitely no issues with any soft braking feel or anything like that. It is on the firmer side, so I can see why that 118 feet number exists. And for reference, typically with sedans or hatchbacks, it, a lot of times they'll come in in the 120. So 118 feet is definitely plenty respectable for the Impreza. But then touching on suspension and handling up front, you're gonna get an independent strut type front suspension in the back, double wishbone type rear suspension, front and rear stabilizer bars. As far as ride quality, Quality goes. Let's go ahead and hit some manhole here. It's fine. Definitely no issues. I would actually say it rides a little bit on the smoother side for a compact car. So definitely no issues with that. As far as steering feel goes, that might be the first thing I noticed when I first got in this one. It definitely leans on the heavier side of things, which I personally prefer. There's so many sedans, so many compact cars out there where the steering feel is on the looser side. And I don't like that. It didn't give you a better feeling of confidence going into a turn. So little bit on the heavier side nothing too crazy but i do like the weight of the steering here in the impreza as far as cabin noise goes it's actually been perfectly fine i mean you are going to get a little bit more wind noise when you get into compact cars but quite honestly for the impreza it's not that bad so i really don't mind it as far as visibility goes that is perfectly fine i can see perfectly fine out the back so 100 percent on point there but that about rounds out the performance segment of this review, you guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2022 Subaru Impreza. All right, so here she is, you guys, the new 2022 Subaru Impreza finished in crystal white pearl. Did want to mention first off on the exterior, there is one new color option for the 2022 model year that will be called Sapphire Blue Pearl, in case anybody wanted the latest and greatest when it comes to color options. But let's go ahead and start up front now of this one. Multi-reflector halogen headlights to the side come standard on all trim levels but the limited. They will come with the automatic feature, meaning when it starts to get dark out at night, those headlights will turn on automatically for you there. LED daytime running lights then also coming standard on this one. Fog lights down below, you guys can see those coming with the premium trims and the limited. That's why we have them, because we had the premium trim actually today. Then like I said with the headlights, LED steering responsive headlights coming with that limited trim level only, meaning when you're going around the bend at night, those headlights will swivel based on the direction of your steering angle. That will help illuminating what is around that bend so you're less likely to hit a deer or a possum or a rodent or whatever. So that's definitely pretty cool too. But overall, you guys have essentially seen this front end before. I am definitely a big fan of the fog lights down below, but pretty much rounds out the front end of this one. Let's now go ahead and make our way to the side of the Impreza. All right, so now since we are around to the side of this one, raised roof rail starting up top here coming with the premium trims and the limited hatch. That is how you're going to go ahead and get those black window surrounds do come standard when it comes to the side mirrors they are power adjustable body colored side mirrors for the premium trim level and up and I put it that way because if you go with the base Impreza you're actually going to get black side mirrors and then if you wanted integrated turn signals go with the sport trim level and up and there will be heated side mirrors then if you were to go with the premium trim level and up then taking a look down at the wheel configuration 16 inch steel wheels with covers coming with those base trims 16 inch aluminum alloys coming with the premiums that's of course what you guys are looking at right now 17 inch aluminum alloys coming with the limited hatch and then 18 inch aluminum alloys coming with the sport trim levels. And then as far as those door handles go, they are body colored door handles for all trims, but the limited. So wanted to mention that because the limited trim is actually going to give you chrome door handles in case you were interested. But overall, very nice looking side profile to this one. I like the tire black they put on the Impressa. <laughs> Definitely clean this one up nicely for me. So I appreciate that. But anyways, let's now go ahead and make our way to the back of this one. And so now since we are around back, body colored shark fin antenna does come standard just below that rear spoiler with an integrated brake light. Then just below all of it, let me get down a little lower here. There is a single exhaust outlet. It will be tucked away, but Having said that, you can get a stainless steel tip that would not be tucked away if you were to go with the sport sedan only. That is the only configuration where you're going to get that stainless steel exhaust tip. So I do want to mention that, but having said all of that, I think you guys know what we have to do next. As always here, is that exhaust clip. All 
right, and so now since we are around back of the Impreza, when it comes to opening that rear hatch, there are a few different ways to go ahead and do that. There actually is a button on the key fob to unlock it, but essentially it is a manual hatch. So just simply lift up on the hatch itself. But once opened up, cargo space comes in at 12.3 cubic feet for this sedan. Then if you were to go with the hatchback like we have here today, 20.8 cubic feet, so substantially more with the hatchback configuration. But either way, if that was not enough space, there is a 60-40 split, meaning those rear seats do fold down for quite a bit of extra space then if you needed it. There are actually two grocery bag hooks back there. There's four cargo tie-down anchors. If you wanted a cargo cover, which we do have here, go with the premium hatch, sport hatch, or limited hatch, essentially the hatchback trim levels. Cargo lighting also found back there. As far as underneath the cargo floor, that is where you're going to find your spare tire then, in case you were curious. But now let's go ahead and make our way up to the rear leg room here. And so that is going to come in at 36.5 inches for both the sedan and the hatchback actually for reference i am an even six feet tall this is how much space i had back there there is a rear center armrest with cup holders only if you go with the limited trim so we don't have it here today no rear ventilation you really don't need it in a car of this size dual rear usb charging ports then coming with the sport trim level and up so again we don't have that here with us today but then making our way to the front seats manually adjustable cloth seats coming with the base and premium heated front seats coming with the premium trim level and up you will find leather seating with the limited trim level only also with that limited trim you're going to get a power adjustable driver seat but that's the only way you're going to get that because we do have manual seating here with us today but overall seating wasn't actually that bad not the very most comfortable seats i've ever tested but actually not that bad for manually adjustable seats without lumbar support so i will put it that way but anyways let's now go ahead and take a look at the steering wheel it is tilt and telescoping it is leather wrapped for the sport trim level and up otherwise it's going to be wrapped in urethane like we have here on our premium trim level the make our way to the startup let me first start by showing you guys the key here you do have your Subaru logo on the one side and when you flip it over lock unlock and that button to unlock the rear hatch a pretty basic key there but it is actually a push button start if you were to go with the sport trim level and up or it is going to be an option on the premium that we have here today but I will say we don't have that option so it is simply a turnkey start for us so all I'm going to do here is simply put my foot of the brake and turn the key and so once started up tachometer is all the way to your left speedometer is on your right there is a small digital display front and center and to control what is on that digital display there are actually steering wheel mounted controls found on the left side there and of course you can adjust your driving modes up there as well using the si drive buttons on the right side of the steering wheel but it does give you things like how many miles you have left until you hit empty you can choose to display a digital speedometer up there if you wanted to trip a trip a pretty much your basics so everything you need up there then making our way to overall interior quality a power moonroof is going to be optional on the premium trim level and up meaning it doesn't come standard on any particular trim level but it is optional on all of those trims alloy foot pedals then coming with the sport trims only automatic climate control coming with the limited and overall i do like the carbon fiber ish looking accents on the doors as well as just above the passenger side glove box there is some nice stitching action going on just above the passenger side glove box as well just in front of the shifter you you do have dual usb charging ports a 12 volt power outlet and an auxiliary port there as well and some rubberized storage as well so things don't slide around just behind the shifter you actually have your heated seat buttons and dual cup holders as well and then within the center armrest there is a decent amount of storage with a 12 volt power outlet actually in there as well so overall as far as interior quality goes it is kind of on the basic side of things but then again we do have the premium trim level but it gets the job done i'll put it that way but one more thing i wanted to mention there is an auto dimming rear view mirror with a little compass in the upper right hand corner and home light controls throughout the three different garage doors that is an option that we do have here today so that's available i wanted to mention it because we do actually have it but it doesn't come standard on the premium but we do have it which is pretty cool but now let's go ahead and make our way to the infotainment and the tech on this one 6.5 inch color touchscreen display coming with the base and the premium that is what you guys are looking at right now of course and then if you were to go with the sport trim level and up though you're going to get an eight inch color touchscreen display either way you get bluetooth and audio streaming android auto apple carplay for any configuration you gotta love that so you just simply hook your smartphone up to the impreza via usb cable and you have free navigation displayed up 
on either configuration. That's pretty cool. Factory navigation system though, if you wanted it, is going to be optional on the limited. And there is a smaller little tech display up above all of this. I wanted to mention that too, giving you your time of the day as well as your outside temperature and some basic information there as well. But back to the main screen, you can of course check out your radio information up there as well. And by the way, when it comes to the sound systems, four speakers coming with the bass, six speakers coming with the premium trim level and up, but there is an optional sound system that's gonna be optional on the Sport and Limited only. That's gonna be an eight speaker Harman Kardon sound system with 432 watts. But again, we don't have that one of course today. We do have the six speaker sound system. So what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and turn on that radio, see what we got playing today, and let's test out the clarity of this one. <laughs> horrible for a six speaker sound system at least it wasn't horrible not the very best i've heard obviously the clarity was pretty good the bass could have been a little bit more in my opinion for a six speaker sound system but the clarity was on point it'll get the job done last thing i wanted to mention to you guys on that infotainment screen is when you do put the Impreza in reverse, you will of course find a pretty high definition rear view camera letting you know who or what is behind you, which is always is going to lead us into safety. And so first thing I wanna mention, IIHS top safety pick, which pretty much says it all right there. Front side, side carrier and airbags do come standard along with the driver's knee airbag up front as well. In the back, you're gonna have latch, AKA lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats, rear child door locks, tire pressure monitoring system, but the fun comes in really when you get the premium trim level and up because that is how you're going to get Subaru EyeSight and that's optional on the base trim level by the way it's just standard on the premium trim level and up but that is going to include a pre-collision braking system pre-collision throttle management lane departure and sway warning and then lane keep assist then as well and then if you were to go with the limited that's going to add a few things as well including high beam assist blind spot monitoring system with rear cross traffic alert and reverse automatic braking then as well. And so overall, when it comes to my final thoughts here of the new 2022 Subaru Impreza, all wheel drive coming standard. That's what Subaru does with all of their vehicles, minus the BRZ, almost forgot about that one, but love that all wheel drive system. It is tested to be the best all wheel drive system in existence even now to date. So that's a beautiful thing. Easy to use infotainment screen. Of course, it's a little infotainment screen, but it is very easy to use. Great resale value, of course, with Subarus. Basically, because of their incredible safety and that amazing all-wheel drive system as far as room for improvement goes it is a little bit on the slower side i will say that wouldn't have minded if they maybe even offered a uh, optional turbocharged engine maybe just for the top trim levels perhaps with the impreza wireless android auto apple carplay also would be pretty nice you still have to hook your phone up through a cable on this one which is fine but wireless is definitely going towards the future and so so fuel economy but that's kind of what you get with the all-wheel drive systems these days but anyway Anyways, that is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen. If you wanted to see what's coming next on our channel before it actually gets to YouTube, be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button. If you're into new car reviews, that is what we do here every single week of the year. Do appreciate you guys watching more than you know, and I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold.